wanted to do a part two to my comparing turbos video that I did yesterday. I watched the video and noticed that I mentioned cam overlap uh, or valve overlap uh, in the beginning of the video, and then I never went back to discuss it at all. Um, and so this is another reason why you will make more power on a larger turbo at the same boost level than you would uh, on a smaller turbo at the same boost level. Um, so there's the issue of valve overlap and just overall cam timing. And so I'm going to talk about those really quick uh, and try and give you an idea of what happens. So during valve overlap on pretty much any engine that has any significant overlap, um, you almost always have exhaust that's pushed into the intake port. Now, in the case of supercharger, that's not the case. Supercharger, usually you have a good amount of boost here and a lower uh, exhaust manhole pressure. But in the case of NA cars, you often have a vacuum over here uh, and atmospheric or higher pressure over here, so you still push a little bit in, especially at dive bolt. Um, now, what people don't realize or think about is that the time that these two valves open is very important for how air goes in and out of the cylinder. If I have uh, valve overlap and a lot of it, right? So if I have a lot of valve overlap, which happens right at the end of the exhaust stroke and into the beginning of the intake stroke. So the piston is near the top and both valves are open at the same time. Um, what happens is both valves are open so I have some pressure here and it blows up into this port. And then it'll push some of that fresh air and fuel charge. It'll throw some fuel on the walls again. It'll plate out some. Um, and you basically pollute your fresh charge with exhaust. And then the exhaust valve will shut and you have just the intake valve open. The piston will move up a little more. It'll squeeze some out. It'll come back down. Or if this waits till after TDC, it's starting to move back down again. As it moves down, you'll still draw a little more exhaust, and then it'll shut, and then this column will start moving into the cylinder. But you've already had this contamination of exhaust gas here in, in the intake port. So now when you're drawing down the first portion of, uh, of the piston coming down while the valve is shut on the exhaust side, you're just drawing back in old exhaust. So now you have this volume of exhaust in the cylinder that doesn't burn, doesn't combust, it occupies space, and reduce the power because you have less space to draw in a fresh and take air charge. And the more overlap you have and the higher the pressure in the exhaust manifold, the more air is going to blow up, or exhaust is going to blow up in this port and take up space in the cylinder. So you have these two effects. Because then when you're drawing down, you draw in more exhaust. And so you're not even getting fresh air yet until a while after. So with variable cam time, what you do is on the top end, you minimize valve overlap on a turbocharged car because this pressure is usually really high on the top end. You minimize overlap so that there's only just a little squirt of, of exhaust gas into the port before this valve shuts. Um, but you still have the issue of the piston being near top dead center with this whole chamber being full of exhaust. Now, if you picture this whole chamber being full of 40 psi of exhaust versus this chamber being full of 20 psi of exhaust, you can imagine the amount of molecules in that area is a lot less at 20 psi. And what that means is that there's more room in the cylinder to fit fresh air charge coming in from the port. So, again, if I have 40 pounds during overlap, I blow more exhaust up in this port. I occupy this space, I occupy this space. I'm able to get less fresh air into the engine. With 20 pounds and the same overlap, then I only have this space at 20 psi instead of 40 and a lot less going up into this port. So I have a lot less mass in here. And if you want to get fancy, you could get the combustion chamber volume and the, the piston um, dish volume, find out the volume of your port and try and do some PV over T action to see you know how much mass is actually in there or how much volume you're occupying of the 40 pound air versus 20 pound air. But you know simple basic math is going to say that since pressure is on the top side of the equation, it's going to be directly proportional, which means that 40 instead of 20 means half as much. So you're going to get twice as much um, of the fresh air in this uh, as you would versus uh, if it was at 40 psi. And I don't mean twice as much as in the whole chamber, as mean as in the space available. This 40 psi space is going to occupy twice as much as the 20 psi you know, space would. So that's another source of fresh air and fuel engine and another source for more horsepower. Again, less contamination of the port, less initial exhaust volume and mass in the cylinder. So I can draw fresh air in sooner as it's coming down and the initial pressure in here is lower, and therefore it's easier to get more in. If you were to um, say I took this volume at 40 psi and I opened the intake valve, it would expand up this port to a certain amount. And if my throttle body was shut, I could calculate, knowing the volume of the ports, how much, 
how far the port it went before the pressures equalized, you know, in here. And then you could do it again with 20 psi and find out that it'd be a lot less. And um, that would be a way of quantitatively figuring out what it'd be. But it would take a little bit of math. And it's only uh, giving you some general numbers because as the engine moves, you still have to worry about the inertia of the air coming in, fighting the, the opposing forces and that kind of stuff. But overall, again, high pressure means more contamination of the intake port and more volume stuck in the cylinder occupying space and minimizing the amount of fresh air charge that you can make. And therefore, you do two things. You retain more heat in the engine, which makes the engine more prone to knock the detonation, right? And you also occupy space and prevent more in, uh, energy from being uh, produced the next time around. And you also have to compress that really high pressure here with the piston on the exhaust stroke. So all sorts of things go into just the exhaust side um, of why a bigger turbo makes more power on the same boost. Uh, and then you're not even talking about the compressor side yet. So like there's a lot of aspects about the exhaust side. I hope that helps some more.